core of what we do and why the business is successful is because it plays on some very basic human characteristics and that is that people love to be surprised, people love to touch, people love to interact with things and it's like opening a gift and when you look at it and you're surprised from an advertising point of view it breaks through the clutter, it focuses the recipient, it engages them and in doing so um, it improves advertising results and things like this for example if you, we did this recently it's not just sort of the ancient art of paper engineering it also has to do with um, utilizing technology and the way that technology can be incorporated with that same kind of interactivity. As an AARP authorized agent, you're special. That's why the Hartford is promoting you in a major advertising campaign targeted to your local area. This is actually a paper manufacturer, and this is uh, Carolina. Um, and what this was sent as a, as a B2B piece, and they challenged us to say, you know, how can we demonstrate the characteristics of this paper stock? Let's face it, it's, it's, a, it's a plain white coated paper stock. So they challenged us. Um, to actually build a paper car. So this entire vehicle is completely made out of paper, including the tires. Um, and so this piece now is, is, has a collectability aspect to it. Um, when you open it up and you look at it and you, you, know, you, you run it across your desk, um, you get the sense of the structural uh, capability of Carolina paper. Again, stock. a talker. Yeah, absolutely. And something that breaks through the clutter and, again, begins the dialogue. It helps for the, the Carolina salesperson to get in. Um, and meet um, you know the, whoever the buyer is. This is the, one of the pop-up books that we did in, in, in one of the first uh, pieces um, in the company's history. So we used to do pop-up books and be in the publishing business, but essentially that really migrated over to advertising. But the reason I have this is because if you look at the technique that's used in this pop-up book, which we designed and produced, it's exactly the same that's used in the advertising. Um, and why are pop-up books so popular and so interesting? It's because they evoke an emotion, a surprise, um, a tactile um, experience that you can't replicate any other way. What else is in that book? Well, let's see, this is a little scene here. And there's the... And this is about 30 years old. This is one of the early archive pieces in the company. Um, for Lexus, about 24 months ago. Um, and they had a television campaign that mirrored this and did it in a um, uh, on, an, uh, on a TV campaign where they showed a lot of these attributes, but here we replicated it and all, did it all on a pop-up book for Lexus. And do things move on these pages? And they sure do. Um, let me get you an example of a tab over here. So this, for example, shows a, a damaged quarter panel coming off. This um, shows a taxi hitting the. What kind of work does it take to? come up with this? Well, we have, um, let's see the bird flying away. The squirrel. So there's whimsy in it, but there's a serious message that's happening. Um, we have a, a team of folks called paper engineers, and they are, you can't go to school for paper engineering. Um, they, we grow them here, essentially. We'll bring people in, college interns, people who have an aptitude for art and or, um, there's a combination of both a, an art capability and a mechanical capability. Um, and many of our paper engineers have been with us 10, 20, 30 years, because this is really one of the few places in the country where you can learn and, and develop this skill. And there are other places are pop-up book designers, like uh, Sabuda and others. But structural graphics really is one of the places where you can learn how to become a paper engineer. And again, um, when we bring a candidate in to see whether or not they're capable, what we, we do is we give them a dimensional piece and we say, draw it flat. So we'll give them something, you know, like this car or whatever and say, okay, what would it look like flat? Because sort of the mental capability to be able to look at something in three-dimensional form and translate it into, into flat means you, you, you really have this aptitude to visualize both this way down to flat and then flat back up to three-dimensional. You know, if you look at this Simpsons piece, which I love, um, you know, this, 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 this takes a classic um, imagery of a pop-up book, and this was actually for the launch of one of their shows. Um, and again, you know, is, is this a, an advertising piece or is this a pop-up book? Um, well, this particular one was applied as an advertising piece, but um, and, every, and if you see Bart going across the top, he actually skates down the roof as you open it. So in September of 1986, this is the first time that um, the techniques of a pop-up book were integrated into a magazine insert. Did you guys do it? Um, the, a company that we acquired did it. 
So I guess after we acquired them, we can claim rights that we did it. But a company called InterVisual, who was our competitor for years, who we acquired in 2006. And how was that received? Um, incredible. This has the, this had the highest recall. Um, they did starch rating testing on it. The highest recall of any magazine ad ever done. Vodka, um, and they wanted to the butterfly and the label was was an imagery that they wanted the image that they wanted to communicate and make interactive. So this was a trade piece. This is what the salespeople would take with them when they were calling on major liquor distributors and those kind of things.